invite the fullers up for the lighting of the Advent candle. Good morning. My name is Kimberly King and I am your liturgist. Our Christmas Eve candlelight communion service will be tonight at 6 p.m. The children are asked to wear pajamas to be in the program. The newsletters will not be printed this week. Winston Turner picked up pecans under the church tree. There are some in the fellowship hall if you would like a bag. And please get your donations in for 2023 by January 7th. Are there any other announcements? Miss Mama. <laughs> the web page did not get updated this week because of technical issues. And don't forget to grab your Christmas card book out in the hall. Received everybody. It's good to see so many people here. Angel, who is that young child? <laughs> Kim, that's mine. <laughs> I just want to make sure she knew who she was going to hold. <laughs> Hymn of Praise is number 219. What child is this? Let us stand together and sing. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels stream with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent Golden. 
This is called the Magnificent, and having just sung about Mary, this is the canticle of Mary, and I'd like to ask you to join me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. We'd like to invite our children up for children's time. <laughs> it is to ride in a one horse open sun.
Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for my mom and dad. Amen. Our prayers and concerns. Drew Barksdale lost everything in a fire. Um, Jeff. Tiff. Tiff. Tiff Robinson. Todd Dunlap, five year old great grandson of Roseanne Thomas. Shelton Guest has a stint on Friday. Terry Fuller, Nicole Williams, Pat Cat Pam Catlett. Edwin Story, Ronald Dunnigan, Robert Allen Schaffhauser, Chris Wiley, Scott Russell, Mary Ned Foster, Abby Hamilton Watkins, Frida Schumann Davis, John and Stevie Warren, John Bus Busby, Charlotte Wayman, Paula Jackson, Pat George, 
Jeanette Walker, Kenneth and Pauline Wolf, Connie Cooper, Casey Benefield, Courtney Turner, Tom and Kim Mullins, Lynn Havens, Dan Parrish, Alicia Bl Bivens, Ruby Morrow, Kinsley Hilton, Delia and Lanny Travis, Butch Money, Gloria and David Treadaway, Tammy Duggar, Lamont Bohannon, Bonnie and Curtis Petty, Henry Thompson, Pam Godfrey, Anita Quarter, Helen Harper, David Gordon, David Galanders, Linda Moten, Bonnie Cagle, Karen Reed, Cohen Gregory, <clears throat> Rebecca Ferguson, Barbara Chisholm, Joanne Hargraves, Bill Jackson, Lee Scarborough, Steve Burke, Shelby Sims Sakura, John Johnson, Billy Moore, Bobby Dubach, Miranda Rocca, J.C. Southward, William Warren, Nathan Turner, Terry R. Sullivan, Ruth Cope, Julia Shelley, Angel Galvin, Eric and Kaysen Hoyt, Jimmy Miller, Rosie Hoskins, Sawyer Weems, Claudia and David Newcomer, Faye Dinsmore, Ashley Woodyard DeBolt, Judy Bellamy and Debbie Gordon, Agnes Whitson, Gary and Melissa Maskell, Louis Acock, Carolyn and Mary Wilkinson, Prue, Jake and Bree Hefner, Linda Ro Lisa Ross, <coughs> Glenn and Deb Hosey, Carrie Davison, Clara Bass, Jimmy and Betty Davison, Brenda Woodyard, Stephanie Powell, Sue Lester, Betty Jo Hall and Jody Lambert, Mary Kay Bird, Carolyn Sue Campbell, Lindell Smith, Joy Summerhill, Lauren Jackson Garner, Ann McFarlane, Bill Brown, Robert Dennis, Dale Tyner, Dale Webster, Laurel Coker Catlett, the family of Patricia George, the family of Cora Lee Thomas, the family of Donna Bolanos, and our continued prayer list. Are there any other prayers of concern? Keep Hallie and her family in her in your prayers as she travels halfway across the world tonight. Okay. Any other prayers of concern? For our prayers of Thanksgiving, Angel and Grace and Galvin weren't hurt in, our, in their accident last week. I'm so thankful for that. Kinsley Helton got a good report. Brother Tom and Kim's family is here. Deb Hosey did a great job on the Christmas card book. Nathan is home. We're glad to see you, Nathan. And all of our fr friends and family here with us today, are there any other prayers of Thanksgiving? We're thankful for our large crowd today. Somebody got engaged. Somebody got engaged. <laughs> Miss Gracie, congratulations. <laughs> we didn't do it for him. I love you.
<laughs> the devil in the machine, my friends, the devil in the machine. Dear gracious God, we offer our tithes, gifts, and offerings that they be for the building of your kingdom, asking for your blessing upon them to be able to, to be a hundred or a thousand fold for the benefit of those who are in need and the least of these as we do the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray and we ask and do all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all may wish my mic was off after all that coughing I've been doing up there. <laughs> <laughs>
Our scripture today comes from the second chapter of Luke, eight, verses 8 through 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God. Praise Thanks be to God. God. I think it's very amazing. Uh, this time of year, we have a lot of different stories and different things uh, that we share, but there should be some excitement. There should be some excitement to the fact that we have uh, the privilege of being God's children. And the thing is about that is that we know and understand, and it comes to understand, and I've titled today's uh, uh, sermon as the shepherds and the angels. And the thing about it is, is the angels were the ones that were worshiping and praising and met up with the shepherds out in their fields, right? And the thing that was so exciting to them or, was just the bewilderment of it all. It was just the amazement of all of that kind of thing. And sometimes we get caught up in knowing this story and hearing this story over and over that it doesn't have the same like excitement to it that we would have in the, in the past. Uh, and it's translated, but we should always remember that the reason for this season is Christ, that he was willing to leave on high and to come and to be one of us. Uh, I am so impressed and, and uh, remarkable. Uh, since we've come to Marvel to see the uh, uh, attention to family and friends and neighbors and how all that works and everything, and uh, of course we went to Kim's uh, uh, party that she had for her uh, as a celebration of Christmas. And the thing, every once in a while I get kind of caught up and, and, and realize something a little different. Well, her boss come out and he had a multi-layered... Uh, uh, one of those kind of things you see on, uh, you know, people at Walmart kind of stuff, you know, it was like he come out with that kind of a suit and you can look online and see the pictures of it and stuff. Uh, but it was pretty amazing. But before that, before that had had, and that levity had part, been a part of our, our time together, the remarkable part about it was that he prayed over a meal. And uh, I think, I, I don't know what church he goes to exactly and everything, but usually being the pastor, I end up being the one that prays for every meal. And it was like, I was kind of welcomed somebody else being able to step up and do that. And it was a beautiful prayer about family and friends. And then he mentioned and made specific that this was a party and this was a celebration of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And I was like, just blown over. It was like one of those, to hear, his, to hear someone who was, would be considered laity in our church, and it was one of those things to have that voice and to have that concern and to be able to do that. But the thing about this is shepherds and angels, that's what we are. We are angels because we deliver the message. We are the ones who are witnesses to what it means to be a Christian. And if we are going to have that be done, the fact is, I, I know that people that are called Christers are given a really hard and difficult time about coming to church only on Christmas Eve and then also on Easter, and they throw in a Mother's Day every once in a while. 
uh, for that kind of thing. And we give them a hard time. But the thing is, this is your opportunity. <laughs> this is when we have the most people in church. This is the time to come and to let those people know that we miss them, that we want them to be a part of what it is, is the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. Not only do we want to make them where they come to church or whatever, we don't do that. What we want them to know is that they are a part of this family. They are a part of this family. And if they only come twice a year, praise God that they do. You know, we welcome you and we want you to be a part of that. But I don't want you to say something like, uh, I had a, a member in a church, I've been preaching really depth about uh, we should not, you know, when we have guests and visitors that come to our church and you're sitting and they're sitting in your pew. <laughs> They're sitting in your pew. I was, in, I was really intricate, and I was, gave this message about how, you know, please do not tell them that they're in your pew and have them move. Just go to another pew, please, for the love of, of Jesus, right? Uh, just do that. And, I, I, and to my goodness and, and, and the way it was, I went out, I went to the back of the church, did the blessing, the benediction, and I had this little old lady come over. And you know what she got from that whole entire message was, you know, I hate it when they sit in my pew. <laughs> I'm like, good grief, you know? It's like, welcome them and be a part of that. And know that you are an angel. You are a messenger. You know, you know we don't, uh, sometimes our terminology gets kind of crazy and uh, are kind of difficult to do and everything. But we're also shepherds. So what it is, is if they are coming for those times, make those in-between times. If you get a few minutes, be a witness and be a good witness when you're at Walmart or when you're over at the, the Piggly Wiggly or at, at one of those other stores that you, uh, or Hayes or whatever. It's one of those things that when you're there, be an example, even in, when you're not in this building. Be an example of what Christ wants you to be and how he wants you to be and help others to see that and to be led to know Jesus as their Savior. Because I can't think of a greater gift than the gift that God gave us this Christmas, or that Christmas so long ago. But then also he gave us, and Jesus gave us the gift of everlasting life at the crucifixion. So we have that from being, cruci from being born to coming to be one of us. I had it mentioned to me, and they were saying, that in Scripture, uh, is his name Emmanuel or is his name Jesus? One is Greek, one is Hebrew, and it means God is with us. And the fact that God is with us is a, a, a testament to what it means to be a Christian and to know the Holy Spirit in your lives and different things like that. I, uh, I don't know if many of you, if you know Paul Harvey and one of those things that I, uh, I always think it's a great story to hear every year. And uh, he talks about... There was a man, and I think his name was Jebediah or Jed and everything, and he lived up on the mountain, and uh, he went to church down in the valley in the small town that was there, and you could hear the bells. And it was Christmas Eve, and he was getting ready, and he was all ready and had his, his mules teamed up for it to take him down into the valley so he could go to this, to this church service. And he was excited, but he was a chicken farmer, <laughs> or as they say up north, he raised poultry. <laughs> and uh, it was one of those things that he uh, had, the chickens were out, but there had been a sudden snowstorm, so he couldn't get them back in. He tried to corral them back in. He tried some different things. He, he you know, flapped his arms, and he'd say, you know, you got to go inside. I'm trying to tell you, you got to go inside the barn. You got to go into the, uh, uh, to be there and to be safe and all these things. And he he went around and he ran around in a circle trying to group them up together and different things. And they just wouldn't, they refused. And then he could hear the bells in the background. He really wanted to go to this service, wanted to be at that Christmas Eve service. And he, and he could not, for the, you know, just could not get them to go into the, uh, the coop and to get them uh, rustled up that way. So uh, finally, he thought to himself, and uh, it was one of those things, uh, he says, if only, if only I were a chicken. I could talk to them and tell them about the dangers and about the things that, you know, being out here and freezing to death and all of that type of stuff, and they would follow me and go inside. I can't think of a better Christmas story than the fact that that's what God did for us. He, th he, was, he sent the prophets of the Old Testament, he sent them to us to tell us how important it was to know God and to have a relationship with God, and they refused to listen. 
different voices throughout the centuries came to the people and they told them, said, you know, these are the dangers. These are what are happening to you. And they continually um, just rejected it, rejected the message. And then he said, well, I'll send my son. I'll send my son, Jesus, to be with them, to help them, and he will guide them through. And still we reject. Still we do not have that, uh, we don't listen to that voice, the gospel voice that tells us of what is good for us in the first place. But God has done something and given us the greatest gift of all. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that, in, like that story, the rest of the story is the rest of the story is the story that is happening now. It's about us being a part of that, being the angels who announce and worship God with our whole hearts, minds, and souls, and then being the one that loves our neighbor, being able to, to be disciples, not to abuse them or beat them up and different things like that, but to know there's an urgency. There's an urgency to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and we need to do that. I am so excited about this time of year as I talk about Isabella and kind of joke about, uh, you know, but I think that it's wonderful to see new life and Daniel, to see him and to know that he is a part of our new and growing family of God here <laughs> in this church and in this community. And it's one of those things that we have them as the voices of new life. But the thing is, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, as you recognize the incarnate Christ, both fully God and fully human, realize that he died for you and giving you the opportunity that you might have eternal life, that you might have salvation. So we are struggling in a world that is hurt and damaged and people are hurt and damaged. And it's like, this is hope. And that's what Advent is about, has been about. We talk about the hope. We talk about the peace. We talk about the joy of knowing, and also there's the love, and the love that was born on that Christmas so long ago and gives us the opportunity to know God and to know him intimately. I think it is a great time. It is a great time of joy. It's a great time to hear the voices of people gathering together, but always remember and keep that in the, in, at, the, at the center of everything you do each and every day remembering that God gave you a great and wonderful gift and that you have the gift of salvation and you can share that with others and do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is Away in a Manger, page 217 in your hymnal.
Most holy and gracious God, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, on this Christmas Eve day, we come before you humbly, before the cradle that is the cradle that rocks the world. The one who loves us, the one who cares for us, help us to love and care for one another and to remember that this season is the season of being angels, being shepherds, being able to help and to be a witness to those who are lost and those who are in need. As we go forth from this place, we ask your blessing upon our walk as we walk with you through life. Ask for your blessing to be with us, to share the gospel that is the truth and the love of Jesus Christ. As we remember during this season that we remember the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that is knowing you as our Savior and Lord and thanking you for the greatest gift, dear God, the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. So let us go forth. Amen. Amen.